On the second day of practice up, somebody asked me, are there any downsides to taking alpha lipoic acid? Great question, let's see. So yesterday, in the first day of practice up, we talked about alpha lipoic acid and does it inhibit the thyroid. It doesn't look like that it does, but are there any downsides to potentially taking alpha lipoic acid? And let's take a look. I do believe that there is, although it's somewhat rare and I shouldn't, wouldn't be too concerned, but this is very, very significant and it's a really cool story. So let's take a look. I think yes, possibly, because in some people, alpha lipoic acid seems to cause insulin autoantibodies. Now I'll give the preface and say, probably in people that have a genetic susceptibility to making insulin autoantibodies in the first place, but this is a very interesting story. So let's take a look. What is the problem with insulin autoantibodies in the first place? I figured I needed to explain this uh, physiologically because it's very interesting. So here is insulin. Here are antibodies. When insulin autoantibodies are made, they go and they attach to insulin. This is very cool. Now guess what? This is no longer insulin. This will not bind on to insulin receptor sites. This will not help lower glucose. You follow this? This is important. This is no longer insulin. It actually probably won't even be found on a test. Now, on a blood, blood test. Let's say somebody's glucose is going up. How will the body respond? Well, glucose isn't going down yet because all the insulin's bound up. So make more insulin. People that make insulin at autoantibodies oftentimes will have really elevated insulin levels because the body is trying to compensate for the fact that you have so much dysfunctional insulin that's bound up by antibodies. Now what happens? Insulin normally would be cleared by the liver fairly quickly in a matter of minutes. But if there's insulin autoantibodies on there, it's no longer insulin and they're gonna clog up the system, it doesn't get metabolized. It's not insulin anymore. Yeah, it's, it's insulin with some proteins on it. So it doesn't get metabolized by the liver. Now, this is going to increase glucose because it doesn't bind onto the receptors and the body compensates by making more insulin. Now here's where it gets really interesting. So remember these antibodies. They don't last on there forever and they eventually, let's just say, fall off or degrade. Now what do you have? Loads of insulin. It didn't get metabolized or cleared out. It doesn't break down on its own. And when the antibodies go away, you have loads of insulin at what's called a physiologically inappropriate time, which means not during a meal. So then what happens? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you have all this insulin and you get a huge glucose crash. Insulin autoantibodies are associated with hypoglycemia because of this release of insulin at physiologically inappropriate times, okay? It's fascinating, it's super cool stuff, isn't it? That's the theory, at least. So, how does, uh, well, actually, nobody knows how this causes it, but does alpha lipoic acid cause this? There's a whole bunch of case studies. Insulin autoimmune syndrome possibly caused by alpha lipoic acid. Case report, here's another one. Potential cause and effect relationship between insulin autoimmune syndrome and alpha lipoic acid. Two case reports. Here's another one, alpha lipoic acid and insulin autoimmune syndrome. Here's another one, clearly didn't read this one in Chinese, but the abstract was good. Insulin autoimmune syndrome associated with alpha lipoic acid in a young woman with non-concomitant disease, interesting, and recurrent insulin autoimmune syndrome caused by alpha lipoic acid in, in type two diabetes, another case report. That's all you have on these, except these authors came out and said, well, all right, let's look at all the papers, all the case reports on insulin autoantibody production by alpha lipoic acid and to see if we can find some common correlates. What they found was that it was, not surprisingly, mostly in women. And this region was very interesting. This is usually associated as, it's very supposedly, insulin autoantibodies is supposedly very rare. And it's usually uh, happens over in the Asian region. Here is China, it was quite a few, but look at, there's a number of Italians that were making this. And then there is, this is, you guys, the numbers aren't that high, but it's because there's not that many case reports about this. They also found that the average dose, sorry for the lines there, was about 600 milligrams in most of these case reports. Some were taking less, a couple people were taking more, but this was sort of that sweet spot. Most of these people in these case reports were taking it for diabetic neuropathies, pain, right? Alpha lipoic acid I have here is a powerful supplement that according to the literature, 
is helpful with neuropathies, glucose regulation, neurodegenerative disorders, mitochondrial function. It's as an antioxidant and it's fairly potent as that. But if a patient experiences hypoglycemic episodes within, it's usually a couple of weeks, could be faster, could be longer, uh, without taking, consider discontinuing it. Now, I have a quick comment about on how often should you be concerned about this? And I'll go ahead and say probably not. However, in this supposedly, think about this, and I have slides on this, but think about this for a second. I've had three patients myself in the past couple of years that have insulin autoantibodies by a regular lab test. It's said that it's usually, I forget the name, it's, it's Asian, it's Japanese, Chinese, something, um, name for the condition where you're making insulin autoantibodies. One of my people was a uh, white male, another one that was a white female, and a third one was a black female. They all had insulin autoantibodies. I don't think this is as rare as it's made out to be because I think people aren't looking for this. Now, my quick comment on that is insulin autoantibodies are considered to be rare and alpha lipoic acid causing them is even more rare. But think about this. Who's publishing these case reports? I've seen three cases of insulin autoantibodies in the past three years. I've never reported anything on that in the published literature. And if doctors aren't aware of that as a possibility of hypoglycemia, for example, or the interactions of alpha lipoic acid with insulin autoantibodies, and how many people that are taking alpha lipoic acid are gonna to go to the doctor, the doctor's gonna research this and take a look at this and figure out that it was alpha lipoic acid in the first place causing this, and then decide to write it up as a case study. I think this is not as rare as it's made out to be. The reason why, well, first of all, somebody asked this, the reason why I'm covering this here is just to be aware of this. Insulin autoantibodies do exist. It is a cause of hypoglycemia, really weird blood sugar crashes well after a meal. Alpha lipoic acid can cause that. We like to give alpha lipoic acid, and I think it's a great supplement. However, it isn't without problems. So I just want you to be aware of what I think one of the more significant ones that I don't think is as rare, um, but is something to certainly consider. I hope you guys enjoyed the second day of practice up. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and God bless.